Hey everyone, Ezra here. Today I'm going to be going through how I make my effects in Black Ops 3's Radiant. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that effects rendering is enabled in this effects menu tab. Then in your camera view, you need to click on the second option called render flags and make sure that render enabled is also ticked. And then after that you can go back to the effects tab and then click new effect. And you'll see that it's made a new effect over here for us. So we need to bring it into our camera's view. Like that. And then now what we need to do is right click anywhere up here and find FX graph. And then also find FX outline and FX properties. And then in our new window, just make it a bit easier to see. So I'll put effects graph and effects properties together and effects outline at the bottom and for those of you that know how to use effects editor it's pretty much the same thing now and uh, if you want to you can skip through to the next part but for those who don't know how to use effects editor or this just simply click on this new billboard sprite and then give it a name so firstly I'm going to try to do a muzzle flash for the ray gun so I'll call it green flash and then under visuals you see um, the type is billboard sprite that means that uh, no matter what rotation you're looking at the uh, the effect will be facing you if you click down here you'll see there's a lot of other effect types oriented sprite means you can only see it from one um, one angle rotated sprite means you can rotate it I'm not entirely sure what tail and line do um, and then model is obviously just rendering a model. Dynamic light is what we'll be doing later on. And then these last few I'm, I've never really looked into. So firstly in the visuals, just click on the add button. And then, so we need to find something that looks like a muzzle flash. So we'll just look for fire. And then we'll choose uh, one of these. You can press the play button down here to see what it looks like. So we need to select one of these that say Anim EM next to it. If you find one that says Dark Deset, you can't use that one because it, it, it would be black and white. So I'll pick this first one here and then you'll see that it's really massive in the view. So what we need to do is go to movement and change the width down to about 10. And then now you see that if we play it, it's just sitting there. So what we need to do is go to visuals and then find animation and then go play rate sync to particle lifetime and now you see it's flickering quite a lot so we need to change the interval so I set it to about a thousand which is one second you see it's playing like that now so what we need to do is uh, tweak it a little bit so then it's green you can do this by going to the FX graph and then over here in color click on that and then you'll see a graph come up so to make it green we obviously just drag the red um, the red channel down and the blue channel down as well and then when we look at it you see it's now very green but we don't want it that green so what we'll do is we'll just drag these up to about 0.5 like that looks all right and then now we just need to click on the green flash and press ctrl c ctrl v to make another one and then what we can do is go back to effects properties and change up the visuals that are there so let's click on that search for fire again and find another one so uh, we can look for this fire lick it looks all right so we can just click on that and now you see it's playing both of them and then what we need to do is uh, change where are we? we need to change the initial rotation so we can go 0 to 90 and what this will do is it makes it um, spawn at a random rotation every time so we can do this for the other one as well and then we can also go here to the rotation and if you see there's a little one here we can click on it and when we go to the effects graph uh, we see the rotation here and we just drag this up and then over here it will um, it will tell you the value, the scale. 
So we just need to change that to the rotation that we want. So let's go like 120. And then here now you'll see that the flame is rotating a bit. So we can speed that up quite a lot by just middle clicking anywhere on the graph and pulling it up. And we can do the same thing for the, the fire lick. Let's drag that up, make it say 360. Make a knot like that. Something like that. And then if you think it's not playing fast enough, you can just change the life, the lifespan here. Just change it back to about 200. And change the interval as well. Like that. So then now every time you shoot, something like that will come up. But that looks kind of strange because it's so strong. So we can go to the effects graph and go to alpha as well. And then just drag this down to zero at the end. And do that for both of them. And now you see it's fading out a bit at the end. But what we also need to do is change the width diameter. So then the bottom starts at zero and then it expands out. And do that for both of them. And now you see you have something like that to start with. And then what we can also do is just make another knot here and pull it down for the alpha so then it's a bit more gradual on the way down. Like that. And then um, you can just keep tweaking it to whatever you think looks correct. And I think I'll just add another one to make it look a bit more strong. And then Let's find another one here that looks nice. So we can just go like smoke. Sorry, SMK. And look for some thin smoke wisps here. Uh let's see. Yeah, something like that looks nice or even like this. Just click on that. And then you can't really see it right now, but uh what you can do is change the size to be a bit bigger, let's say 20, and then you can also change the life to be a bit longer than the others, and then finally go back to color, and then pull the other two up a bit so you can see it better, and you can see it now a bit off to the sides, so then you can also change the alpha, so then just get rid of that knot, and now you can see it a bit coming out from the sides. So I like the look of that, so I'll leave it. And I guess now for a muzzle flash, you also need a little light in the middle. So what we'll do is, we'll just right click and go add element to selected. And then here, we'll just make this one called flash light. And then under visuals, we'll change the type to dynamic light. And you see that it's not really showing any light right now. We just need to set it up properly in here. So what we need to do is come down, make this sync to particle lifetime, and then light intensity, we change it to 1. Light fold radius, I'll go 5. And then light infraction 1. And then under uh, generation, we need it to look at looping so that we can see it. So then I guess 5 is still too large, so change the intensity to about 2 and radius to say 10 and then lighting 5 will increase a lot so it goes a lot thinner so yeah something like that looks okay probably change the intensity so then it decreases at the end and then the color should also be green so then we'll just drag the red down and then also drag the blue down just like that and then if we preview it by making it bigger again, you see that's a green light. So then now we can just change all these, just highlight all of them and change it to one shot. And you see it stopped playing, but then if we stop our animation and play it, it will shoot once. So that's what we need it to do in game, otherwise the effect will just keep playing over and over again. So after we've done that, we can just Right click on new effect, 
and click to save it if, uh, selected effect. You can put it wherever you want, so I'll just put it in weapon and go FX, muzz, um, ray gun, and save it. Okay, so that's pretty much how you make a muzzle flash effect. This one might not be the best, but you can tweak it the way you want. We can also, say, make some environment effects. So I'll go over here and I'll try and make a fire effect with some smoke coming out the top. So what we need to do is just right click and go new effect. And we'll call this one, this element, um, flame. So then we just go back to visuals. And then in the visual section, go here and type fire again. And then I guess we'll just choose some of these fire bases, like that. And then make sure that we are set to looping again so then we can preview it in here. And make sure that your effects is actually in your field of view so you can look at it. And once again I've chosen the dark that one so I'll just go back and try and find another one. Like that. And then we'll just change the size down to about 10. And then we just need to change the spawn iteration so we can just go 3. And yeah, if you change this to center offset, you can also tweak the offsets if you want. So I'll just change these. And now you can see it's going around all over the place. So that's because our life is so low. So if you increase the life and then also increase the interval, you'll see that um, something like that looks all right. And then we just need to go back to the effects graph. Make sure our alpha graph is sloping up like that. We have something like that to start with. And then now we can move on to the next one. So obviously flame effects are just a few effects layered on top of each other. So here I'll just control C, control V. And then over here I'll change this one to another another fire effect. So we just need to make sure that we don't get the ones that have the dark set in the name. So we have these now. And then we can just change these center offsets here so then they're a bit more randomized and let's see we just change this to about one and then we can also make it a bit um, a bit bigger so just go here and make it maybe 15 I think we should actually change the alpha so then just bring this one up and then bring this one back down at the end and then maybe change the interval so then it spawns a bit more often. Like that. And then also just change the X offset again so then maybe back to 10 to make it a bit more dispersed. And then the Z should be 0 actually, just so then they're all on the floor. Just like that. Some of them can be a bit above to make some wisps maybe five and then for these smaller ones on here what I'm going to do is actually allow them to um, I'm going to allow them to move up a bit so the way we do that is in movement we just need to go find the velocity which is over here so we just need to change the XYZ scale I'll change mine to about 12 for the Z scale and then just need to make the gravity negative 12 for both see it's coming up now so we just make it negative 2 like that then you can see they're now wisping up a bit we we'll do the same for the other flame just negative 2 that and then you see they're coming up a tiny bit and then let's change the scale so then it's going to move up more and we can actually just increase it a bit more so then it's a bit a bit stronger so that's about done the only other thing you might want to do is add a light so similar to before just go right click add element and then call this one light 
and then under visuals change this to dynamic light make sure it's on looping so you can see it and then we just need to come down here to the stops make it say 10 radius 20 um, and then just play around with the radius actually and then we need to make the the light color so come over here and then you see the color is currently completely white so you might want to make it a bit orange yeah something like that looks alright so then now we just need to also move our light up so then the bottom of it is here so then we just go over to our um, offset and just move it up and then you see we have this massive radius here so we just need to keep moving it up So we can just keep moving it around until it looks correct. Uh, actually, I think I might might bring this back down to ten, so we get a strong move, strong light in the center. And then we can just duplicate a few of these, and then change the rotation here. So how we do that is we go down to movement and then rotation sprite. We just change the initial rotation values to be random. And we can also change the rotation here, so I'll go maybe 30 and then on the rotation graph we can just move this around like that. So then we've got a few more coming out there and we can just keep tweaking it until it looks correct. It's looking alright. So then now that we've got that we can also just, let's see, probably don't want the of that big so we can go to visuals click on the light and maybe change these stops like that so then it's a bit less maybe about two and then you can save this now and then I'll put it in fire and just call it fire large and then now if we just went over here and then just went uh, let's see and if we go to our entity browser and drag in effect on just press escape first drag in effect on and then in here we go back and find fire fire large we'll see that it now starts playing our effect we can just move it around so then it sits where we want it to. We just might need to pause it and then play it to make it update the position. And if it's something like a fire that's constantly playing, you do want to keep all these uh, all these set to looping because you're only really going to spawn one in the map. But for a muzzle flash, you, d you want to keep it to one shot so then it appears every time they shoot and it doesn't just where they're looking. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If anything um, doesn't make sense, just leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you. And otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. See ya!